Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship this morning and happy Easter. Next Sunday is our family worship service where it's a little more informal than usual. Not that we're that formal. <laughs> uh, next Sunday as well, the Bayshore Hymn Sing will be at Fairfield Presbyterian Church. Richard Ernst will speak about his ministry in Thailand. And he also will be playing piano for the song. That's next Sunday at 6 p.m. On May 1st, Jim Hughes will be here to minister with a drama during our worship hour. And we want to thank Dawn for decorating our church and always making it look extra special, putting her little touch on everything. And as you can see, there are flowers down here. Now, all the ladies of the church may take one, and if you know a lady that needs one, make sure you take them, because we're not going to water them, they're going to die. So take them uh, home with you. Is there any other announcements that should be made? Well, please stand if you're able for the call to worship, located in your bulletin. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. The soldiers have returned home. Christ is risen. The anger of the crowds is gone. Christ is risen. The time of grieving has ended. Christ is risen. Violence, fear, and death has disappeared. Christ is risen. Come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We'll sing our first hymn uh, this morning, number 302, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We'll sing first and last. Great pain into his hands and his feet they put it up. 
he suffered for us. Now the second one is got a stone in it, a little tiny stone. The Bible tells us after Jesus died, they put him in a cave, a tomb, and put a big stone over the entrance. But on Sunday morning, when the women went to see the tomb, the stone had rolled away. It reminds us that even a huge stone couldn't keep Jesus in. And the last one is a white egg is empty. And the Bible tells us when those women went to the tomb, it was empty because Jesus was not there. He is risen. And there was an angel there that said, he is no longer here. He's risen just like he said he would. And that reminds us that the tomb was empty. And Jesus, we serve, really took up the cross. And he wasn't held by the, those nails. They couldn't keep him in that tomb with that stone there. He's risen and now lives forever. Let's pray. We thank you, Father. You loved us so much. You sent your son to die for us. We're thankful that the story doesn't end with his death, but we serve a risen Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is number three, 322. Up from the grave he arose. 322. Please stand if you're able and sing with me. Sing first and last.
joys and your concerns. So what's on your hearts this morning? Yes. Pray for you, and your chicken skills. cellulitis, which is bad. I got that twice on my leg, and it upset it one time because I didn't listen to my body. So thankfully she did because spending 10 minutes, 10 uh, days in the hospital was not fun twice. Right? And also Jane about her teeth, and Sharon had her gallbladder out, and she's in a, quite a bit of pain, more pain than she thought would be. So, yes. Jane Hall has been in the hospital, had issues with sugar. Supposed to come in. Yes, Jane. Send me a link to her book so I can buy it and read it for story time. Really yeah. Right. Okay. We're very, very proud. It's okay. You're, you're allowed to be proud of your grandchild. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Yeah. It's nice to have our visitors with us today. Yes. We're just letting you know you can welcome back anytime. Yep. I'll save you a seat. You want a nice, pushy seat? I have some up here.
Yes, Mary Lou. The school had called me about the baskets, and they said how beautiful we were going. <laughs> and to make sure we thanked everyone, and uh, they're very appreciative of them. There's quite a few in the town that they do. You can read both. Yes. Thank you for everyone that gets it, brings it together. Yes? Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I want to make compliment about the two flower and carry out front of the church. They're full bloom. flowers and all the decoration. Anybody else have anything to share? Yes. I just want to thank the girls that, that brought the flowers in. Okay. They look beautiful. They do. Mary Lou and Ruth came, right? Mary Lou. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
continue to heal her, but also that her pain would be to subside and that it would be managed well. For Jane Hall, who has issues with sugar and is coming home from the hospital, is supposed to do it today, I pray that you tra she transitions well back to home or wherever she's going, and that you would give her your healing touch. And hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Mark. Right at the end of Mark. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Mark 16, 1 to 8. The next evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of James, went out and purchased burial spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they came to the tomb. And on the way, they were discussing who would roll the stone away from the entrance. When they arrived, they looked up. And they saw that the stone, a very large stone, had already been rolled aside. So they entered the tomb, and there on the right sat a young man clothed in white robe. The women were startled. The angel says, do not be surprised. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and give the disciples a message, including Peter. Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. And the woman fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, saying nothing to anyone, as they were too afraid to talk. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Now, several years ago, a woman told me that her great-grandson asked her why she had so many wrinkles on her hands. You know, kids, they'll ask the darndest things. Well, she said, well, I'm old, <laughs> is the answer she gave him. And do you know what happens when you get old? He said, you die and they bury you in the ground. And before she could say anything else, he added, but that's okay, God comes and unburies you. What more is there to say? He just told the Easter story. And for us, it's that simple. We get buried in our own lives, our circumstances of life, and God unburies us. Over and over, in my life anyway, God comes to the tomb of my life and unburies us. That's Easter. That's the power and love of God. It is true as it is simple. That truth speaks louder than the reality of our burials. There are so many ways in which our life gets buried. Sorrow and grief, death and loss, fear and anxiety, anger, guilt, resentments, self-hatred, things we've done, things we should have done. Those are the stones that block our way. Those stones mark in many ways in which we have suffered death, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritual. And with each stone we ask, who's going to roll away that stone? Who will do for me what I can't do for myself? And that's what the three women are asking as they walk up to this tomb. It's not really a question as much as a statement about their life and what they expect. Their life has been buried in loss, in pain, in death. And they expect it to be that way and stay that way. They expect a stone of death that's too big, too heavy, and too real for them to do anything. But they went anyway. 
I wonder how often we live not only expecting to get buried, but expecting to stay buried. We too quickly forget that for every burial, there is a resurrection, there is an Easter. That's what the women discovered as soon as they looked up. The stone of death, the stone that blocked the way, had already been rolled back. And that's why we show up this day, year after year, we want to hear that Easter story. We want to know that the stones of our tombs have been rolled back. We want to hear the story again, be reminded that the tomb is empty and open. We want to know ourselves as unburied. We want to hear one more time, Christ is risen. God unburies you, this little boy told his grandmother. The young man in the tomb told the woman, he's been raised, he's not here. And the church proclaims, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. However it's said to you, it's the good news we want and need to hear. These are sacred words, words of hope, of life, of resurrection. Everything in that moment changed. We can be new people. Recall for a moment the stones that blocked your way. Christ is risen, and they are removed. Name your loved ones who have died. Christ is risen, and they will be unburied. Count your sins. Christ is risen, and you are forgiven. And as we stand before God, Christ is risen, and you will know you are loved. Removed, unburied, forgiven, and loved. They are God's Easter words for us, not just for today, but every day. God has been enacting words of salvation, hope, and love to God's people from the very beginning. It happened when we were created in God's image and likeness, the very, very beginning. God's Easter words were parted in the Red Sea and drew the Israelites to a new land and a new life. Those same words translated in humanity a new heart a new spirit, and made us God's people. Ezekiel, if you remember that story, stood in a valley of dry bones, watching God open up graves, that might have been a story and a half to have, and breath, breathe life into dead skeleton. It never ends. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, I have hope for today. One day, a father and his daughter were out for a leisurely drive in the country. It's a hot summer day and the windows were rolled down. Suddenly the daughter began screaming in her seat. A bee, you know how I love bees and wasps. A bee flew inside the car through an open window. This would not have been a problem for most children, but for this little girl, it was a problem. You see, she was allergic to bee stings. And in fact, one sting could send her into a coma. And as the girl was flailing her arms around, as we do when we're scared, the father quickly pulled over and calmly reached over and held her arms down. Then he himself, with his big, strong hands, caught the bee. The bee promptly stung him, because that's what bees do, and he threw the bee out the window. The girl, still in tears, was unable to calm down. Her loving father reached over and held her, and he whispered these words to her. It's okay. It won't hurt you now. I took that sting for you. I do not know how many of you are sitting here today with daily issues of life, feeling buried or afraid of what's happening. Resurrection is hope for you today. Jesus is alive and present to help you in your time of need. Today, Christ offers you and me this unburied life. One day you look up and you see the stone of death has already been rolled away. Christ is risen. The unburied life comes to us in a thousand different ways. When you overcome bitterness and anger, reconciling with another person, that's life unburied. If you feel the presence of a loved one who's died, but you weren't even thinking about them, that's life unburied. You look at the world and you weep with compassion for its pain, that's life unburied. When you respond to another harsh word, or someone does something to you, and you respond with forgiveness rather than your own words, which would be quick and easy to do, that's life unburied. If you live without fear, holding nothing back, 
offering all that you are and all that you have, that is life unburied. You feel a new sense of Jesus' presence, a reality, and a connection to moves beyond belief. That is life unburied. Life unburied always presents itself as new creation. And so it is with the women today in this gospel. They go to the tomb on the first day of the week, the day creation began. Everything is being made new. Sun has risen, the dawn of a new day, declaring that the Son of God is risen. And if Christ is risen, then so are we. We are risen people. This new day is our day as well. The day of holy, un unburied people of God. The story is told of a millionaire, Eugene Land, who greatly changed the lives of sixth grade class in East Harlem. Mr. Lang had been asked to speak to a class of 59 sixth graders. I bet that was a hard test. What could he say to these kids to inspire them? Most of them were assumed would drop out of school, would drop out right in Harlem. Eh, not too bad. He wondered how he could get these, uh, these predominantly black and Puerto Rican students to listen to his rich white man speak. <laughs> So he scrapped his notes and he decided to just speak from his heart. And he said, stay in school, he admonished them, and I will pay your college tuition for every one of you that can achieve, so you can achieve your dreams. And that moment, the lives of those students changed. For the first time, they had hope. Said one student, I have something to look forward to, something waiting for me. Nearly 90% of that class went to graduate from high school and go to college. Sometimes we just need a little bit of hope, something to hold on to. So today I'm here to remind you that in Christ there is hope. Not just the promise and hope of heaven, but hope for today. Even when everything seems to be wrong and going wrong, God is there with you. Don't let the sin and sickness and wickedness of this world make you bitter. You can be bitter or you can be better through it, whatever happens. So take the hope of Easter and cherish it. Let this Easter be the reminder of the stones in your life can be rolled away. And let the hope of God carry you always. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes them stones are heavy and they look like they are unmovable. We know you can give us hope. You can give us the strength to get through whatever we are there. And if we look up, we'll see the stones already been moved because you're there with us in the midst of it. Thank you for that Easter hope. In your name we pray. Amen. Now we sang a couple Easter hymns. Does anybody have a favorite song they'd like to sing this morning? Uh, see, I did it again. <laughs> Wrote it down and still didn't do it. We'll do that when we get done. We gotta take the offering. If we don't take it now, I won't remember. Now we'll continue to worship the Lord by presenting your tithes and your offerings. At least I'm consistent, I guess. One thing about me.
you to give. We pray you would bless all those that give, those who can't give, and we pray that you would give us the ability to use this for the good of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, Lori. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. Make a place, have a uh, special prayer this week on Tuesday. We meet with the insurance company and the building inspector about the steeple. Okay. And pray that you know, everything will be covered. You guys may be seated. I won't pray for that. If anything comes from the conference, we got to pray about. I'll edit that out of it. <laughs> so let's pray about this meeting. Lord, we want to thank you that we have the opportunity to have this adjuster come. We pray that he would do well by us and wouldn't try to get one over on us. And if we have to fight a little bit, Lord, give us the wisdom to know what to say and do. We just want what is uh, due to us for the steeple. We ask that you would just give us your wisdom and be with us on that meeting day. In the name we pray. All right, we have 504, the old rugged cross. We'll sing first and last.
there's a saying, fake it till you make it. And uh, there have been times in my life where it wasn't well. And I threw a fit, and I told God about himself. But I held on to the faith of the people around me. Because I, I knew that God was good, I just couldn't see it through the darkness. And if that's you this morning, reach out to the people around you and hold on to their faith until it is well with your soul. Somebody else got a song? 310. 310? Okay. Got ready to dead. <laughs> he lives.
power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you in love, and fill you with joy in the faith. Amen.